So Akashic recently reissued two of your photo books, your book of Fugazi photos, Keep Your Eyes Open, as well as your skateboarding book that you did with C.R. Stesic called Dogtown. The first thing I wanted to ask you is if you could talk a little bit about one of your favorite uh, Fugazi photos, a posed photograph in the book. It's always hard to pick a favorite photo, but I think that the picture that we have across from the contents page, we'll start at the beginning of the book. Um, I really love that picture a lot. I think it's cool because, you know, it shows a lot of their character. I think it's one of the first days that I ever shot the whole band together. Um, you know, obviously I'd shot Ian for many years before that um, in Minor Threat and other times we've had opportunities. But, uh, but that was, yeah, one of the first days I think that we shot. And I just like it because it also has that federal feeling, you know, with the big columns and it just composed really beautifully. And I think that a lot of people that I shoot after you know, I started shooting later, always like to mimic this, uh, this, this infamous shot. I have a black flag underneath a palm tree where Chuck Tukowski is leaning in. And I think Ian is kind of, we're kind of doing a little homage to that. Ian is leaning in on that picture a little bit. And uh, yeah, I just like the composition of that photo and the character that's in it. And again, that it gives that federal feeling, even though the guys in the band don't like to associate themselves with the federal city at all. You know, being a person from outside of DC, that's what you always think of when you think of DC. And how about a, one of your favorite live shots? Um, well, let's move all the way to the back of the book then, because it is really hard to pick a favorite. You know, there's so many beautiful shots with so much color and then some with black and white that are really beautiful and grainy. But I'd have to say probably the last band shot I ever made of them as Fugazi, where they're playing at Fort Reno, where I'd shot them many times. And you just see, you see everybody in the band. It's not intense though, because you don't see their faces, but it's incredible because you feel the community and you just see the, you know, just the ocean of people out there at a free show in Washington, DC. And it just seems to go on, you know, all the way forever in this huge park. And there's lights in the background that just barely light up the audience that's really far away. And, I, I kind of love that one. And, it, you know, the, I think the, uh, the big library in downtown D.C. is going to do a display with that image, I think. And there's a post right there now at Fort Reno, kind of like a, a marker of like a landmark. And they use that photo on there. So it's, it's pretty cool. I, I like that shot for that reason. And it is the last show on U.S. soil. I have the assumption that you pref would, and I might be wrong about this, that you would prefer generally to shoot bands live versus posed. I'm not talking about just Fugazi here, just in general. Do you yeah, have no, a I mean, you know, I come, I mean, it's a way to get into the Dogtown thing. You know, I cut my teeth in skateboarding. I cut my teeth in action photography, but I was always into clean compositions and making things look beautiful. Um, you know, so for me, the trick is to get, you know, a beautiful photograph and, but also show the intensity of the moment, right? So yeah, I definitely like shooting live pictures more than posed pictures. So sticking with the theme of Dogtown, which you mentioned, when we reissued the book, you made a number of changes to the book that I know you were pretty happy about, that happy to have the opportunity to make those changes. Can you talk a little bit about what those changes were and, and why you wanted to make them? Yeah, I mean, that book had five printings before we came to Akashic, and I'm really, really grateful that you guys have republished that particularly because you allowed me to redesign it and rethink some of it, you know, um, the, right from the cover, we could start with the cover is different. Um, it's not much different. I mean, it's the same idea. It tells a lot of stories, but within the book itself, um, we laid out Craig's original stories to look more like they did in the magazines. You know, um, it's all the same content, but we use different typefaces and working with the designer. We, you know, found some stuff that really looks similar to what we had what was printed in the magazine in the 70s, and that makes it more fun. Um, and in my section of the book, I just added like little bits and pieces everywhere, you know, little tiny images and sometimes full page images that we just rediscovered. Um, pictures of magazine pages from, you could see where this picture came from, like this very, you know, this infamous, you know, photo of Tony Alva doing the front side air that was like the first time that had been published. But in the original Dogtown book, I showed two pictures that were taken, you know, the same hour, but not that one that was in Skateboarder. That one that's in Skateboarder is in some of my other books, and I wanted the Dogtown book to be different. But we printed the Skateboarder spread in this new book, so you could see 
you know, how it relates to it. We did that in a, you know, half a dozen places within the book. And then there were some new images that we just didn't have before. Um, you know, later images, you know, that I took, you know, the last time I saw Jay Adams, some portraits I took of him, you know, some portraits of Jeff Ho, who was never in the first book. Um, and, you know, we just did a lot of cool, you know, little things, nothing really big, but we did expand it by, I think, at least a dozen pages too. Um, you know, I, I loved the, I love the new design of the Dogtown, The Legend of the Z-Boys book. I think it's great. I'm really, I'm happier with it than I've ever been with that book, for sure. Having been actively taking photos for over 40 years, how do you keep your eyes fresh? I think my eyes are always fresh. I'm always looking at everything, you know, every moment. I'm just really an aesthetically controlled person. Just everything you know if i'm in the house and i see pillows in the wrong place i gotta fix them you know when i'm walking down the street and i see beautiful things i just stop and look you know not as much when you're in your hometown but when you travel um you know so i'm always seeing things but i'm not always photographing right i just don't i don't photograph that much anymore i do it when i'm inspired to do it and when i can do it when i have the time and the ability you know i still use film mostly you know especially you know for professional reasons you know i use the the iPhone and take pictures with that sometimes, but it, that's just, you know, you know, that's, that's not the real deal. You know, you could get some beautiful images with that and people do and the quality of those things is, is phenomenal. But, but, um, you know, I, I live through my eyes, you know, so it, a matter of it being fresh, I mean, things are fresh to me every day. I always see different things every day that are stimulating to me and that are, you know, that they, got me looking, you know, and when it comes time to doing a photo session, when I really am setting out to make photographs, it's like, it's real, it, it's pretty damn easy. You know, it just, I don't know why, just, that's just my thing. Do you think you were born with that? Like, and, and do you have a memory of being visually stimulated in that way before you started uh, taking photographs? I think that everybody is, I think that's how humans are. But I think that once I started composing images within a camera and seeing how they would come out later, um, you know, you get more of a knack for it. You're, you're actually framing things as you see them and you want to see things more beautifully because you know that's a way to portray them and to kind of idealize them, which I often do to my, you know, detriment maybe sometimes, you know, or the people's detriment. You know, you make things look more beautiful than they are just by the way you set them up, right? And, but, but that's what I love to do. I mean, it's just like a puzzle for me. It's just like, it's, it's, it's something exciting and it makes you feel good. It's like hearing a good music or seeing a beautiful painting. If you look at something in a particular way and you look for the beauty in it, it just makes life more pleasant, doesn't it? <laughs> that's what I think.